We are so excited to again have another very esteemed guest. <laughs> very special. welcome. A very special guest. I mean, I'm just so glad she was able to make it. <laughs> right? Right. Yes. <laughs> welcome, baby sister Emily. <laughs> Oh, thank Yay, you. The baby oh, angel. Like, well, did you so. let the cat did you let the cat out of the bag, Natalie? That we call her baby angel. Baby angel. Oh she's um, the baby angel because oh. and, and she's always been called the baby angel. I think oh. it's Jane. Everybody keeps hearing Jane. I think Jane refers that what? it started with Jane that she Jane. calls, oh, it's baby angel. Oh yeah. I, I mean, mean it always starts with Jane, doesn't it? Does yeah. it? <laughs> I know. So Emily. I mean, yeah. you have such a sweet spirit. Watch this as we tease her. Everybody's like, oh, oh, yeah. she's so sweet. So everybody that listens to the podcast, this is kind of funny for me. They're like, does Emily talk? <laughs> yes. Natalie? yes. Yeah. It's, so, it's so hard to get a word in with the two type A dominant older sisters. So normally I'm very like a little bit more submissive. I'm an introvert by nature. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I'm ready to talk, then absolutely I will interject, but well, it's really get a word in with those two. <laughs> why does she, why does she talk about us like that, Natalie? I, I, I'm I don't shocked. Understand. I do not know why she honestly, it's really, she hurtful sometimes. No clue. So <laughs> we, uh, we're going to, Natalie, we need to be quiet and it's like time try. for Emily to confess. Uh, so uh, I will, I will, she's confessing today. Let's turn it over to Emily. Emily. So I will give a little sweet little story about Emily though. Uh, Emily, uh, she has been like the sweetest always, like sweetest little caretaker in the world. And that goes back to the day that uh, at the bus stop, she brought home this stray dog. And uh, it was this big <laughs> Chesapeake Bay retriever. And it was wandering yeah. around at the top of the road. So she brought it home and she named it Carmel. And it was, it was this huge dog. <laughs> I'm massive. sure it was somebody else's dog. It, no, it was, yeah. it was. It was. The story is that it was, and they had moved and they just hadn't come back to get it yet. They were still moving their house and they came and they were like, oh, y'all have our dog. And uh, his name was Gator. Gator. <laughs> I did and love she Gator. named it. The had... dog's name was, she, she called it Caramel. <laughs> Caramel. I mean, he was a beautiful color, but do you think they called him Gator? Kind of like Greg? for yellow Gatorade, that that was his eye color. His eye uh, color was amazing. I and think it was because he was supposed to be like a ferocious guard dog. So he was anyway, that guy. is that is Emily's heart. And she also had a guinea pig um, that she used to feed lettuce uh, out of the refrigerator. So her sweetheart is that she's always been the caretaker. And uh, so I will just turn it over to sweet Emily. So Emily, tell us, you've always been the caretaker. So tell us about uh, your your sweet life, like where it started. Like uh, you have the kids, thank the Lord that you had all the babies in the You're family. You're welcome. So. Okay, stop you telling Emily's welcome. story. Go, Go. Emily. <laughs> Go. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Um, you know what? Growing up, you all were always taking care of me. And that, that just kind of come to my, my mind real fast. I'm like, these two strong women were always leading me in the right direction. <laughs> if you remember Ooh. that so well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but always, I always had a heart for animals, children. I just, I couldn't wait to grow up. A lot of people have um, careers that they want to do. And it's always like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And how do you tell people like, I want to be a stay at home mom. Like I want to have my babies stay at home with them, nurture them. And I want to be that PTO mom. I want to be that person. I want to have the big minivan. Um, say it. I mean, I spoke it into existence and it did happen. Um, <laughs> three wonderful children um, was able to stay home with them uh, many, many years until like a lot of us um, went through a divorce. And then I became, became the superhero Emily, the single mom cape and all we all yeah. have our own capes um so I, I we need to bounce back and just talk about those uh children um yes. there was uh there was the first that's uh owen my little heart and yes. then how many years later did the other ones come two years later uh -huh. um there was how many there there was two they thought it was a, a fibrosis or something crazy but actually those little 
five roses had little heartbeats. Um, oh. so they were babies. <laughs> there were multiples. Uh, twins, <laughs> twins had twins. So blessed. Um, I, I can't, they are my heart. They're my world as any parent probably feels they are, they're your everything. They're your purpose. They're your light life. And it's just such a privilege and honor to be able to have them and raise them and experience. I know that y'all are puking over there. No, we're not. I love them. I believe the children are future. I'm going to start singing. We are the world and the greatest love of all from Whitney. Absolutely. So, so blessed that I was able to be a stay at home mom. Um, Yeah, but I'm jumping in again. Like while you had all these kids. You had all these kids, like you know. Yeah, you, you had, had a litter those, of kids. You had <laughs> you had a gaggle. litter. We're like a little so gaggle of geese. Coat. We'll you across. had the gaggle, and you had like a suburban, and then you had like that crazy haunt. Remember, Odyssey. she had the Odyssey. That all those doors that opened. Everything you also. You button, it was like a spaceship. Yeah, yeah, you also had. Didn't you have like a home daycare or something on the? Oh bench? yeah, you. I digress. Yes. Um, uh, my ex husband's military, so we lived in New Mexico. Um. And where we lived was was Clovis. It was the armpit of the universe. And I'm looking for jobs. And I'm like, I can't, there's nothing really out here. Um, We were, what, two hours away from Lubbock, Amarillo. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere. Thank you, Air Force. Um, (laughs) So I've always had a heart for children. I even did um, a little babysitting when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Just just really enjoyed that. Um, So I decided to open my own daycare. And what's (laughs) that? What is better than having, you know, working from home, having, uh, I think it was seven or eight kids that I could watch mm-hmm. and then I could send them home at the end of the day. Like mm-hmm. I had the best time. That Baby. gives me such anxiety for you. Oh my God. <laughs> like, absolutely- oh my God. You're in charge of seven or eight babies. I'd be like, I can barely take care of the dogs. You're right. I, I absolutely adored it. Got to so close to the parents, the children. I even see pictures now of them on Facebook. These kids are like late twenties now. Um, <laughs> so if that makes you think anything, um, yeah. Right, so I brought that up is because I remember visiting that house at Clovis. We brought my grandmother out there and there yes. were like barriers to entry. Like there was areas where it was like, you know, I, I, I if the house was like a daycare center inside, it, it, it was well, like, it was a daycare gosh. center. It was licensed. This, yeah, yeah, it really it, was. yeah. It was a daycare center. You know, where we lived in that part of the, the base um, was just like little two bedrooms. So all the other couples there that did not have children thought that we were crazy. Like, what's this lady doing? She's got these little tykes, huge pieces of equipment, and they don't have a child. They have two dogs um, that they treat like children. Um, so that honestly, I, I feel like some things I'll grab onto and I will, ex- y'all, I was the daycare, daycare provider of the year. So <gasps> I did not I'm know not that sure you remember were that. that. Did oh, you know? God. No, I didn't know. We can, I can post those, those articles that I was in the, the base newsletter. I mean, it was a huge honor. So it I is love a huge structure. honor. Um, yeah. it, was, it was great. I mean, we had a great life. Um, yeah. And it just got better after we had kids. I mean, we moved to South Carolina. Um, but just a second while the found out was preg- pregnant with the first child, my husband at the time had to go to Korea. So what oh, yes. does one do? One comes home to the and? oldest sister. Um, and? <laughs> and I lived with my sister for a year and she yeah. helped me raise my first child that first yeah. year. She yeah. was my Lamaze coach. She was holding that leg when I was delivering Owen. That's right, I was, that's right. I'm going to tell right. you right now, I was not going to be in the labor and delivery. I, I was that sister. Because I, I could not sister. cross over that barrier of seeing your JJ. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Never J in here. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was so wonderful, so special. Blessed, you know, two years later, had the twins. And it was exactly what I wanted. It was exactly what I needed. And a lot of people are like, oh, what's your career? And I'm like, man, I've, I've done it. I feel like I've done it all. And you are a domestic engineer. Yes, you are. Technically. And I'll, this whole time I was doing uh, mothers of preschoolers groups, being, doing the icebreakers, all that great stuff. Oh, wait, you were a mom's group. Cause I remember you were moms of multiples. Moms mm-hmm. of multiples. That was fun. Ladies. I mean, we looked like a complete freak show when we go out and there'd be 10 of us. And then multiply that times multiple. So maybe 30, 40. And all these little kids look exactly alike. 
Um, That's so cool. Right um, so it was I'm so blessed. It was such a great, great life and still have an awesome life. We've just progressed to a different, a different time after those, those kids left the nest. I mean, that was absolutely now they're now they're cool though I mean they come back oh they're so much fun they're in their 20s now well 19 and 21 and so so but so you ended up just to kind of say this you ended up getting divorced and then you moved back to Tennessee and you worked in government I mean that's in your bio on your on our website where you worked in government but that was like not that, well, honestly, you took care of all the customers because you worked oh, at the clerk's office and you took mm-hmm. and you had so many relationships. So that was awesome. So, but then what happened? Because somehow you got into a caregiver role, like you got back into it. The kids were older, mm-hmm. made some changes in your life. You came to me and helped me with when Jason got cancer, you moved to my house. Like so I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And what did you do? Oh, I absolutely. I even said, I think I even said, like, do you want me to come to New, New York with me? Like, I could be the dog nanny. And so you, <laughs> he would still have that support. But you're like, no, I think that might be a little much. Uh, so I, I, seriously, people, two months of nothing but complete love from a little beagle and an English bulldog. And I mean, it's the best therapy anybody could ever get. The best vacation. <laughs> and Natalie and Jason have a beautiful home. So welcoming. Um, I did break a few things. Sorry, Jason. Um, <laughs> did break a couple of things. I did. I did. And I'm I didn't want to tell him. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Jason. Love you. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's me. I'm always a little, you know, I'm not sure if you kind of know this. I don't know if it's in my bio, but I'm very tall. I'm six foot one. Yeah. And so it's alarming. And then on top of that, I have this, you know, crazy red hair. So it is, it's quite a, a feature when we go out places and, you know, I've got my little mom that's like five foot five, even though she says she's five foot five and a half at every doctor appointment. Um, so we're quite a little duo going out. Um, so while so, I'm having the great, great time at Natalie's and I'm like, okay, this, this has to come to an end. What am I going to do next? <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, so hold on. So you jumped, you know, you, you, You've got the kids, of course, and they've come out of the nest, but a little bit before that, because we kind of skipped over, there's a portion in there about Connie, and oh, yes. many of you know oh, that, that we we refer to mom as Connie, Connie. so yes. Emily is the one that's back in Tennessee, and that's right. where, you know, everybody knows that we're from, yes, and exactly. so that's where Connie is mom. And yes. um, so Emily's the one there and she's got the kids and she's raising the kids. But now my dad passed away in mm-hmm. 2011. And so Emily is there. Uh, the kids are gosh, 10 and nine, I think. Yeah. 10 and nine. And uh, so Emily's got uh, a 10, I, uh, yeah, a 10 year old and uh, two, oh, yeah, 10 year old. two. I think they were like nine. eight and six. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. That, that is yeah. right. Yeah. So uh, my math is bad. Um, anyway, so 2011. <laughs> and um, so uh, dad passes away. Yes. And yes. mom has Parkinson's. And so uh, congratulations. You're the one that's there. And so she is, she's still functioning. She's having oh, some I'm, trouble. Yeah. Um, she's, you know, she needs assistance, uh, and the kids go back and forth to a certain extent. Um, they'll go back and forth. Um, and spend the night with grandmama, mm-hmm. but you're there and mom needs, um, uh, sometimes she calls. <laughs> well, let's, let's hold on a second. Let's talk about the evolution of your caregiver journey with mom, because I think that's where we start. Yeah. So exactly that. So you're a mom to the kids. Cause the kids are aging right? as we go. The kids are aging. And you're working full time, right? And mom is living in an apartment. And so let's talk about how it evolved into as to kind of where we've gotten now. Cause I think a lot of people experience yeah. that. So let's right. go there. Let's go there. Yeah. Cause you're, so, yeah. Yeah. So working full time after dad passed away, of course, I stepped up um, and would check on her. We would go by there daily, honestly. The kids lived very, we, mom lived very close to their school. So they would go there after school um, and they would help out spend the night with her. 
I mean, we were always there. Not only were we there for her, but she was there for us too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes as a caregiver, I have to remember, separate that that's my mom. That's my mom. I'm there to help her compared to like, you know, let me clean, cook, do all these other things. So yeah, we were there and got to spend, the kids got to spend great years with her. Um, just enjoyed it. So helped her. And then when the kids were getting older, then I felt like, okay, what's my next journey? What's my next thing? Do you Um, think that you felt like a caregiver at that time to mom? No, absolutely not. That's important because most people don't recognize themselves as caregivers. And right. I know I didn't. So I, I don't hear you because you're going to use caregiver differently as we move along in the journey. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you were still like helping her a little bit, like you yeah. would drop in and I know you take like food occasionally. You guys would go out and eat or things yeah. like that, but she was still mobile. She was still driving. Yeah. Yeah. She was only five minutes from where I work. So I would get those phone calls during the day. I need you to come here now. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm the only one in the office. And <laughs> just like, Can't do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So you, at some point, you moved at some point. Yes. During that, during her illness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moved in 2019 to be with my awesome middle sister um, and her husband for a little bit. And then decided to take a job opportunity in Indiana. Yep. And that was coming to a close. And then I get the call from Natalie. Like, and you hey, raised your hand. I'm in. Pick I mean, me. I got I, 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 you know, beyond my children, the pups are pretty close after. Um, <laughs> and Thank I'm you. Well they love you. Yes. I'm well referenced as Aunt Emmy. Um, and so there's such great therapy. I find a lot of calmness and peaceful in animals um, rather than humans at times. So <laughs> it is great. So. We had already, you know, during that time, we had been dealing with mom because after you had moved, mom had had uh, the medical crisis mm-hmm. in 2019. So yes. we had moved her. Um, she had actually lived in North Carolina and then we had moved her to uh, South Carolina, uh, to, I'm sorry, to North, uh, goodness gracious, Tennessee. 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 (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so during that, we also had, uh, Natalie had hit her crisis. And so, and that's when uh, Emily went to Virginia to help with the dogs. And Mm -hmm. then, is that where you're jumping to? Yeah. And then, so mom's in her third facility because you guys moved mom into her third facility right after your wedding, if you remember, in March of last year, because JJ happened to get married while during a crisis. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. She very generously switched up her wedding so we could attend. And, um, but so you guys moved mom into another assisted living facility. And we'll talk about kind of our journey with mom and how that as the three of us a little later and, um, in a different probably episode, but this really is Emily and how you felt. And so mom, we get the call. We're talking, I'm in New York and we get the call and we're like, we know we're going to have to move mom. So that was in June. And we were talking like she'd only been placed at the newest facility in April. And, um, Mm -hmm. that was concerning. But Emily had, she had helped me move her. Emily helped move that, everything. That van. Oh, yeah. <laughs> move now, I can take credit because when you all moved her out of the apartment in Tennessee to her first facility, right? Um, I was a no show completely. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. okay. Well, but you know you what? Had that's already, okay. you had just met me in April to move her once. And so Emily, I guess that call when we said, Oh, we have to move her again. Emily, Emily says, what were you thinking? <laughs> We knew that we had, you know, we had to move her. So Emily, we say we have to move her and the best option is to move her into a home environment. So Emily, what were you thinking? I I think it was essentially, we either move her to skilled nursing, which I I felt like she was nowhere near ready for, or one of us is going to have to stand up and and do this and take this. And I I love you guys, but I'm like, nope, I don't think they can do this. (laughs) And so I really, I prayed about it um, every day, kept in my good routine, you know, get up, exercise, listen to Joel, you have my time with God. And that's when I really was like, guys, I just need to really pray about this and see 
where he wants me to go because I was pretty much ready to, you know, hit the road, be a traveling house sitter and go live my yeah. best life. Um, yeah. So that's when I was like, okay, this is where God wants me to be. I might want to do other right. things, but I have to listen to his call and where I should be. And that's exactly what I did. And then everything just, I, I don't know if you remember, Jay, everything kind of fell into place. Right. Like it just, just fell into place. We found a home. Um, and it just, it fell into place, but those, we died, finally did get moved. Um, and those first three months, holy cannoli, um, boot camp. I mean, I've lived, you know, a slight little military life with, a uh, the husband at the time, but, um, it was, it was intense. And I remember calling all being like, I don't think I can do this. I need help. I need help. I think I, and I'm somebody that kind of internalizes and said, I don't need help. I can do this all by myself, but. Like when we got here, I'm like I'm raising my hand. I need help. Um, <laughs> so what do you think? So, so here's the other thing. I think there was this thought that it would get better because we need to acknowledge, and we do, we talk about in others. Our mom is very difficult. Yes. Um, she is very, her Parkinson's uh, medication also has some side effects that make it more where she's very dependent on her meds and she's very, it's almost like you're addicted to the dopamine because that's how you're treating Parkinson's to try to help with the symptoms. But she, she was also quite the spirit beforehand. This is our nice way of saying it because we'll never, you know, we, we always want to be respectful, but right. She's, she was difficult and she got asked to leave out of all three of the facilities. And um, when she didn't get the meds, and this is again, a Parkinson's issue, she could become aggressive. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that was yeah. the problem. So you, this is the thing. We thought she would get better in a home oh, yeah. situation, which was the why behind why we moved her back into right. the home yes. setting. So Emily, exactly. you get in. So it's August 1st, picture at Sicily, 1932. We she is going from home. assisted living to this great condo oh, kitchen. She has full bedrooms, access to her, bedrooms, her own bathroom. Community. Yes. It's it's what, could be, what could be wrong, Emily? Uh, getting her meds when at the exact time they were supposed to be doing. Oh, exactly. Were, there was not a minute that passed that they weren't on time. Um, I had a, I had alarms set on my cell phone my little Fitbit. I mean, I had alarms everywhere. She had to take meds every two hours um, and still dealing with the up and down cycling of, you know, craving the medicine, et cetera. Right. So that's when we decided that another big reason so that she could do the pump, but she had to have someone there to help with the pump. Right. So then we, we took that journey of um, having the stoma put in and the pump essentially dispenses the medication, uh, the carb her Parkinson's meds automatically into her intestines. So there's no wait time. It's easy. It's not every two hours. It's only three times a day that she takes meds. And I thought, we thought this is the answer. This is, <laughs> this is going to make, this is going to make our life so much easier. And it was, we thought it would happen immediately. No, it, it took a few months and we're still in the process of getting regulated with this medication. And I got to say, yes, it's a hundred times better, um, but it, everything has its downfalls and she's still very independent. Um, and Nellie, I think this is where you get your high maintenance from, um, <laughs> but she's very high maintenance. Um, but I mean, she's always been like that. Yeah. So that didn't surprise me. Um, what surprised me is how much time this took. Even, you know, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. You know, I've raised three kids on my own. You know, what's one person, you know, it's, it's a totally <laughs> famous last time. words. How can, yeah. how bad can one person be as I'm uh, raising three children? Three not children. the same, not the same. And then transitioning to the role of not only being respectful, this is my mother, but I'm also the caretaker trying to care for her and finding that fine line of respect and okay, this is what we need to do so we can get through the day. And you all know, you know, raising three kids, I really didn't have a lot of time to cook, but I could prepare stuff pretty easily in 30 minutes. And mom loves to cook and I do not enjoy cooking. Um, so that, that was a struggle within itself. 
so we talk about respectfulness. Um, so you're, you're talking about, you know, the boundaries. So what issues just out of curiosity have you had with mom cooking? Um, like uh, mm. you, you've tried to lay down rules, for example, like because mom <laughs> is a little messy when she loves to cook. So what are some of those issues you've had, Emily? Yes. Um, well, number one, I, right out, right when we got home, it's like we, we cannot, you cannot use the stove um, because there were tremors and stuff. So I felt like that was a reasonable Fair. request. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's not burn the house down with me in it. Um, so, I, you know, I would, I would break down the recipes so that she could help and still mm -hmm. do that so she can help. But uh, impulse control is always in the happening in the back. Um, so even when she would, you know, want to get things out at three o'clock in the morning, I would wake up and there was Aunt Jane's famous green beans all over the, the floor of the kitchen. It just kind of, um, and that wasn't the first one. Um, so there was the chili that I'm not sure if y'all know how, how much chili can fly in the air, but it's on the ceiling. I mean, one night chili. Um, she sneaks up and she gets up in the middle of the night. So this is the thing that I think is interesting is the role reversal, because yeah. ultimately you're put in the role of almost being the parent, because mm -hmm. when mom doesn't get her way, she almost reverts to childlike behavior yes, and you absolutely. end up having to give instructions like a child, not because she's not smart, but yeah. because she, she really struggles with wanting to have her own independence and, but you're putting in rules for safety yeah. and that's a hard transition. I think any of you guys who have listening, who have had aging parents and having to have that role reversal where you're telling, like, it was hard for us to tell mom that she couldn't drive anymore. Right. It's hard for us to say, you don't have control of your money anymore, because trust me, if she had control of her money, she would make it one day. And so she doesn't understand and, and inflation recently, she doesn't understand how much milk cost. And she wanted to make the infamous banana pudding incident. <laughs> so why don't we talk about the infamous banana pudding incident? <laughs> this was a, a definite point, even between the three of us. I mean, right. I just simply sent a text and said, Hey guys, you just need the banana recipe, a banana pudding recipe. And then I, I had it. <laughs> AJ had it and was holding it hostage. Yeah, like it, it was it, a hostage situation. So the, the question was, can I have it? And I actually was sick. I, I was sick on the couch. And so I didn't get up and get it. There's This is part one. And so then Emily, in her state of tired frustration, because yeah. she is overworked 24-7, and we recognize this, her, this is how things go downhill. Because life is not perfect, even though there's three of us. Her frustration yeah. is, why can you not send me the recipe? <laughs> Just simple request. And she needed it immediately. And that was okay because she's frustrated. Not really at me, but she wanted it. And I was yeah, like, mom, I'm down on the couch. Yeah, mom wanted it immediately. And, um, and that was causing Emily stress is that she couldn't yes. get it immediately. And I think then there was the question of, uh, do y'all know how, because oh, I make it, it's a homemade recipe. I'm like, do you know how much butter, milk, flour, everything cost. And we're and on a Emily, budget. And we're on a budget. And then Emily responds, I planned for this. I buy yeah. the food. Yeah. And I'm I questioning for it. You know, X amount mom, mom has quite a little sweet tooth. So I set aside, you know, maybe 20 bucks a month to say, okay, this is for the sweet stuff. So why are you questioning me about how much this is going to cost? Alex, you're back. Like, I'm just not going to take it. <laughs> so this leads to one of the biggest, like, yeah. arguments, like the whole system of care breaks down over banana pudding. But in addition to this, Emily wakes up. We, we, we finally get it somewhat resolved. She gets the recipe. We're at peace. We know that it's going to cost relationship repair to make it. But Emily, how does the story end about the banana pudding? Well, anytime we cook, I have to help. And essentially, I'm just the sous chef and she's the main person. She tells me what to do. And then I execute. Um, so <laughs> she couldn't. She wanted to make it that night. And I was so tired. I mean, you all know that there'll be times that I'll be in bed by 830. She's in bed at 830 minutes later. I'm right behind her. <laughs> so she but she got a little burst of energy and decided that she wanted to make it in the middle of the night. Um, so she sure did. 
woke up and it's everywhere and it just tastes like sugar water um, yeah. <laughs> because she's missed some stuff. And then I'm not sure if I told y'all, um, the next day we did have a, a care provider come in for a few hours and they attempted it together. So, but we got the call from you that morning that was, yeah. there's milk because she made it. There's flour in the floor. The butter has been softened. It's ruined all the butter. And so <laughs> that was like a last straw. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, I mean, then what do you do? I mean, it's just a complete defeat mode. Well, um, and it's, it's, I think the other challenge too is, uh, Let's talk about where the doctors are pushing you because it was like similar to the doctors pushed me to get Jason outside and to get him to move. The doctors have, are saying to mom and saying to you, you need to be more independent now that you've got the pump because before she had the pump, it was harder for her body to metabolize the medicine timely to be, depending on what she ate. But then she has the pump and they're saying, Connie, you should be able to do these things. And how is she responding to that? Not well very negative. Um, then it became a role of, okay, let me see what she can really do. If I wait five minutes, you know, she wants me to help her get something or whatever the case is. Um, I would have to just completely see what level is she at now that she has this medicine completely flowing through her. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I found out she could do a lot, like she can do quite a bit. Um, and so then I had to be the independent cheerleader motivator that you can do this. Yeah. Um, and how did she respond to that? Hmm, not well, not well. Yeah, not well. she didn't like it because here's the problem. She had gotten used to living in assisted living where everybody waited on her hand and foot. Mm -hmm. And she expected that of you. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. And I will say I enabled that when yeah. we moved in because I thought that was the level of care she needed. Yeah. So I continued. And like you said, burning the candle at both ends. I was doing it just yeah. <laughs> the whole time. So all of that, like, I feel like you, you have like this heart M, that because you raised your hand and said, yes, I will go. Yes, I will do it because I don't think mom is ready for the skilled nursing facility, which was really our next step. And she wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but during all this, you know, we have this crazy text stream. So I, I think you guys have had employment issues, you and mom, like over- yeah. So how many times for each of you? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> how many times have you been fired is what yeah. you so, uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Um, I, at least once weekly. So I'm you, you fired. fire her or how's that work? Oh, no, she fires me at least once weekly. Okay. And then I, I get, I usually hit a breaking point once a month. Okay. That I'm like, I, I send that text out, guys, I'm done. I'm out of here. Yeah. Get here. Um. <laughs> It's true. She does. Yeah. And we do. try to, we try to mitigate and come back and we do the same love and like, okay, what can we do? How do we support? Yeah. But yeah. So I think that's hard. I think, I think that's the biggest thing. So I I'm just kind of thinking, um, so what is, what is the biggest thing that you learned? You've learned from this? Cause you're still in the middle of it. You're like, Totally. Yeah. You're, there is no end to this journey yet. So yeah. you're like living it every day. So how do you kind of, what's the thing that you didn't expect and how are you getting through it? I didn't expect this would be 24 seven. I didn't expect, I thought that I would, you know, we had plans that I would work from home. I mean, that was, that was so exciting. I'm like, yes, I can work from home. And um, no, there's no working from home. This is a beyond full-time job. Um, so I, I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't expect when we finally did get income in here, uh, excuse me, in-home care, um, that they wouldn't show up. That mm -hmm. when they did show up, it was sometimes a little scary. There were some awesome ones uh, though. And we still have some great ones that come in and help. Um, but there's only so many hours in a day that they can help. And then I'm yeah. responsible for the rest. And when do I get a break? When is their Emily time? Yeah. Um, that's what I struggled with yeah. was, okay, where am I in all this? Because I'm losing myself completely. Yeah. So how are you, how are you surviving then? What are you doing to try to take care of yourself daily? I, you know, I had a good friend reach out to me that he experienced a similar situation 
and that he was his parents' caretaker. And he said, he emphasized the most, didn't ask about mom very much, just general. He's like, what are you doing for self-care? And I'm like, oh, well, what do you mean? I don't have time for self-care. You know, being a mom, you don't have a lot of time for yourself. So I kind of, you know, thought that was how it was going to be this, this way also. But I finally realized, okay, I, I've got to exercise daily. That's the best thing to get mm-hmm. all this anxiety and stress out. Um, I, intentionally, I have to stay on a routine and take time for myself. And that might seem, as we all think, selfish at times, but it, it's not like a husband role or a spouse role kind of situation. Mm-hmm. This is my mom. So how do I take care of her the best? I've got to take it myself first. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's all we ever heard, you know, raising, raising kids and stuff. Every parent was like, what are you doing for yourself? What are your hobbies? And I'm like, what do you mean? What a hobby? I've got three kids. I don't have time for hobbies. Um, but this kind of, kind of step back for a second and realize, okay, this is my mom. She had a, an awesome life and continues to have a very successful life you know, at home, going to the daily living center, like I've got her in everything feels like, um, but what am I doing for myself? And so that's when I really had to step up and say, this is not selfish. This is a necessity that I must um, exercise, eat healthy, like really go inward of like, what can I do to make myself still be great, a great caretaker and a great person within myself. So it was intentionally taking time for myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'll ask, cause it's always like, okay, what's the confession? Um, when you don't do those things though, like when we start getting those calls, like mentally and emotionally, like you drain though, like your bucket gets empty. Like it's been dumped. <laughs> yeah. Like you're like done. It's, it gets dumped. And it's like recently I've not been taking time for myself, doing my devotion, exercising, eating healthy. And so, you know, I hit a brick wall last week completely, yeah. you yeah. know, that once a month, like, Hey guys, I'm out of here. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was Jesus notice. take the wheel for us. Yeah. You gave notice. Yeah. We got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've not been taking care of myself. And that's yeah. when I completely hit the wall. I can have meltdowns that my body starts reacting, I'm getting sick more often. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just doesn't handle stress. Well, I think that's with all of us though. Yeah. So now I have to be, you know, really get back on track. I know it's the first of the year and I had all these great expectations and goals that I'm going to do. And then it's like, fell, fell flat on my face, you know, last week. Um, yeah. So now we're recovering and coming out the other side, um, so, and it's, it, it's, it's going to get better. Yeah. It's got, it, it has to. So I've, I, well, we've talked to other people before and it's just something that's interesting and I'll get your take on it. They've talked about people when they've had children and you look at your children and they're born and then mm-hmm. they turn 18 and hopefully to God, they move on. You know, sometimes they stay, <laughs> But like dad said, he broke our plate and we were gone. He wasn't feeding us or anything. It's true. Yeah. But you, you signed up and um, at some point you had to say, okay, we know that mom's Parkinson's, she can live with it. But to a certain right. extent, mom's next step, it, it's a terminal type. There's no cure for Parkinson's right. and mom is aging and she is aging in place. And so you know, you're just a very young pup at 44. Um, what do you, I mean, we, this is our pain, like Natalie and I, this is our pain, um, where we say, is Emily giving up her life? And there's a lot mm-hmm. of caretakers out there. We say, and so this is our therapy session because we worry about you constantly. So what's your like thought? Like, where are you? Like, where's your head? Like, are you? what's your dream? Like, what's your next goal? Like, what's your step? Are you living with Connie forever? I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what JJ's trying to ask. She's just over here just chatting I, I away. Know. She's alluding to something. I always say to everyone that I come across that I just want to live my best life, whatever that looks like for each individual. Like I have these dreams that I want to travel and go and see adventurous places. I don't care how much money I make. I could care less. Um, I just want the experiences because you never know when you're when you could get that diagnosis of you cannot travel anymore, of you can't leave the house. Are you taking mom with you? I mean, we've talked about that, but I think <laughs> it will work. 
we've not uh, gone on like a field trip or anything over not yet. Just, um, I was just checking. Yeah. So like I said, we had a wall last week and I'm like, guys, what do I do? You know, I'm out of here and I'm like, okay, well, if I'm out of here, what are the steps we need to do? So yeah. Friday was a very adventurous day. Yeah. Um, we went and looked at skilled nursing, a few assisted livings, and it just, it was a huge wake up call. Like again, the guilt starts seeping in and just, mm, and I'm thinking, God, is she ready for this? Like, how can I be so selfish? And I know that's not something that we're looking forward to in the future, but it was an eye opener. Like this is, we need to be prepared. So when yeah. this does happen, then we're going to have to see. Um, right. So Friday, we just kind of digested it and looked around and it was honestly, we had the best day um, <laughs> talking to people, looking at different locations. Um, again, the guilt, like she's not ready for that or it can she live in assisted living? Um, so at, at this point, we're just kind of at a, at a stopping kind of point saying, okay, what do we do next? And what I always think is, okay, tomorrow's a new day. We're just going to take a deep breath and we're going to just absorb this and say, okay, this is, we've done everything we possibly can do. And let's just start fresh tomorrow and we'll figure that out tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I think, and you're, we're, and for all of us, I think we're planning for tomorrow because that's the biggest thing in our past is that we had no plan in. Yeah. And no uh, we always thought that mom was going to age in place with dad. And mm -hmm. as much as we don't want to have to move mom, um, we had no plan before. And if we're visiting, she's never made the decision on where she went. We've always just had to place her. And we're at least being proactive and she's as smart as a cookie. You know, she's the smart. Oh, yes. And um, for her to be able to have some control and what her next steps are is, right. is a big thing for her. And um, so at least we have a plan and that's, I think that's important for everybody. But yeah. The first step is to have a plan plan yeah. for risk, because at some point we know in the near future, we're going to have to move her. And the thing is, is no matter no matter how much we don't want that, we also have to be real about it. And, yeah. and, and we have to not feel guilty because our, if mom is in a nursing home, if mom is in assisted living, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know how she'll go back into an assisted living considering it was so poor the last three times, but um, because assisted living facilities don't allow her to use the, the pump, which is that gives her meds. And so it's, we're in this really hard place that, you know, do we take something that she's not going to have gotten used to and, uh, and go back to 15 to 20 pills a day and fighting with nurses that don't give it on time. And it's not because they don't want to, it's because they are serving so many people. This is a system issue. If you think about it, we're put into a place where mom really would actually benefit better pro probably from assisted living because of the socialization piece of it, having all the people around her and they go out on field trips. That's why I love assisted living. I told Jason, I'm like, sign us up. Like he turned 55 and I was like, I'm in a, get us in on the assisted living community. We're in there. And so he's like, Natalie. And I'm like, what a, I'll be the prettiest youngest one at least, but <laughs> I think that's the hard part. And so I think, so I think we're at a place now where it's going to be deciding what's the point and then how it, the other piece that'll be interesting though, is when mom does go to her next step, then what will you do? Because there's so many caregivers that once that, that kind of journey is ended, you'll still be your daughter. You'll return back to daughter. But now we're so acutely aware of the caregiving responsibilities. It's like I said, I'll never stop being a caregiver. Like right. once a caregiver, always a caregiver. And once you recognize it. So I think, you know, it'll be, what do you do after? How will you feel about that? Will you feel grief and the loss? Will you feel guilt? How will you get through that? But I mean, I think that's something even if you're thoughtful of and you're proactive and thinking about it, mm -hmm. will maybe help manage those feelings and emotions as we go through. So, yeah, I agree. But like I said, you know, every day is a new day. They could have a cure for Parkinson's tomorrow. Dude, you dude, that's what we want. That's, that's exactly what we want. I would, you know, 
saw some wonderful assisted livings, Autumn Care, Carnes, Tennessee, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and set up my prepayment plan, prepayment plan for them. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm We've like, got long-term planning. Uh, Ma'am, you're yeah. only 44, you can't move in here and you're like, why not? Why not, yeah. <laughs> so it's just one day at a time. Yes, we're, we're getting prepared. We know what the future holds yeah. um, to some extent, but we're getting, we're going to be prepared this time. Yeah. So when she does fire me eventually for the last time and I fire her <laughs> for the last time, I want it to be her choice yeah. because she doesn't have a lot of choices in life right now. And I want her to have always have a choice that this is, you can choose. So ultimately oh, like all of us, it's, it's our choice. Oh, don't you love yeah. that? I love free will. That's a great way. I love that's it. a great way to wrap that one up. Oh, yeah. M, that's so good. I love, we love you. We love, love you, baby. baby Angel. We love you. We'll keep you. <laughs> so here's okay. So I want to ask the question. Go we for always it. ask the question, uh, Emily. What is your guilty pleasure that keeps you sane? And you have several, I know, because you and I are super tight. I'm like, I'm sitting there like, well, I'm not going to give all of your guilty pleasures away, but what's your go-to? Like, what's the thing you're like, oh, I love this. I love this. Um, if you know me, you lo- know that I love to have bath time. It's- ah, <laughs> that was what I was going to say. Yeah. I mean, you you know me. You you all call. What are you doing? I'm like, I am in the tub. So Thank you. She will um, totally talk to us on the phone it, it, in the bathtub. Bath and body works. Please send please, supplies. Please send us some please. bubbles. We need yeah, some bath someone bombs. That says a, a huge tub for a six foot one woman that I can fully stretch out in. That would be great. Hello, um, <laughs> bath keepers or bath whatever you are. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> just, yeah, that's how I just kind of like take a deep it, breath. And Anybody that would help us with the uh, water heater bill at Emily's house. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, it takes a lot of water. Emily would take baths at my house and Jason's like, why is the water bill so expensive? <laughs> and she's in our bathroom and we have this huge tub that we never get in. And oh my Emily, I call Emily and she'd be I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, the dogs and I are taking a bath. The dogs are hanging out beside the tub. Yeah. And you, are oh. a, you know what? We always said you were a water baby because you love oh. being sweat. You love swimming. I did. Well, let's get real. I'm a Pisces, so I'm a fish. Oh, um, there you go. Oh my God! <gasps> Think about you being a Pisces. <sighs> Our because we don't we don't really get into that kind of stuff. No, we are not yeah. into horoscopes. But that is so yeah. neat. There you go. There yeah. you go. I didn't M. know that you were a Pisces. Yeah. M. Em, she's the perfect, she's the perfect angel baby. She is from. the baby angel. She's perfect. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, well, thanks everybody. Thank you, Emily, for sharing your story. Cause I think it's so important because it's a different perspective mm-hmm. and it's important to hear. And I think so many people who are out there who have, I mean, you've been a caregiver from like a sandwich generation caregiver. You've been a long distance caregiver and now you have been a direct caregiver. And yes. so you're totally beating us. And, uh, <laughs> and you know what, thank you for, for being, for sharing and being vulnerable and sharing the hard. My pleasure. I appreciate it guys till next time. We, uh, thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye.